Good morning. morning. And happy Thanksgiving. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning. And to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you've not already done so, we ask that all cell phones be silenced at this time. Leading us in the celebration of the Eucharist is Father Jim. Please stand. We invite everyone to please pick up your songbooks and join in our gathering song, number 762, We Gather Together, number 762. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this morning. And a very blessed and happy Thanksgiving to you all. You'll look much more bloated tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> Friends, to prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries, we pause for a moment, call to mind the love of God poured into our hearts that allows us to follow Jesus faithfully every day of our lives. You came to the gathered of nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of God, our Heavenly Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless, and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on this Thanksgiving day, with gratitude for your kindness, open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child, so that we may share your gifts in loving service. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses told the people, The Lord your God is bringing you into a good country, a land with streams of water, with springs and fountains, welling up in the hills and valleys, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, of olive trees and of honey, a land where you can eat bread without stint and you, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones contain iron and in whose hills you can mine copper. But when you have eaten your fill, you must bless the Lord your God for the good country he has given you. Be careful not to forget the Lord your God by neglecting his commandments and decrees and statutes which I enjoin on you today. Lest when you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and lived in them and have increased your herds and flocks, your silver and gold and all your property, you then become haughty of heart and unmindful of the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph, serpent, serpents and scorpions, its, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers, that he might afflict you and test you but also make you prosperous in the end. Otherwise, you might say to yourselves, It is my own power and strength of my own hand that has obtained for me this wealth. Remember then, it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to acquire wealth by fulfilling, as, as he has now done, the covenant which he swore to your fathers. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. There is, of course, this great gain in religion, provided one is content with the sufficiency. We brought nothing into this world, nor we have the power to take anything out. If we have food and clothes, we have all that we need. Those who want to be rich are falling into temptation and a trap. They are letting themselves be captured by foolish and harmful desires, which drag men down to ruin and destruction. The love of money is the root of all evil. Some men, in their passion for it, have strayed from the faith and have come to grief amid great pain. Man of God that you are, flee from all this. Instead, seek after integrity, piety, faith, love, steadfastness, and a gentle spirit. Tell those who are rich in this world's goods not to be proud and not to rely on so uncertain a thing as wealth. Let them trust in the God who provides us richly with all things for our use. Charge them to do good, to be rich in good works and generous, sharing what they have. Thus they will build a secure foundation for the future, for receiving that life, which is life indeed. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On his journey to Jerusalem, Jesus passed along the borders of Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. Keeping their distance, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he responded, Go and show yourselves to the priests. On their way, they were cured. One of them, realizing that he had been cured, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself on his, on his face at the feet of Jesus and spoke his praises. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus took the occasion to say, Were not all ten made whole? Where are the other nine? Was there no one to return and give thanks to God except this foreigner? He said to the man, Stand up and go your way. Your faith has been your salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have kind of a remembrance of what God did for the people of Israel 
when he brought them out of their slavery. But you know, those 40 years that they wandered around in the desert was because they were hard-hearted. They kept rebelling over and over again, even though they saw all that God did. How the pillow of fire led them. How the sea opened up that they could escape. How the water was given from the rock. How the manna came down. They kept forgetting. Forgetting to say thank you. Forgetting what God had done for them. Well, and so this part of Deuteronomy reminds them that put your wealth in being grateful to God. So we come uh, several thousand years, fast forward, and we have Jesus passing by a nearby a Samaritan town. And the lepers, there's ten of them. And somehow they know that Jesus could do something for them. And so they cry out, Jesus, have mercy. Heal us. Heal us now. And Jesus simply says, okay, go show yourself to the priests. And then on their way there, they realize that they were healed. Nine of them flee. But you know, when I was thinking about this, what made that one leper made him different? There had to be something very different about him that he would return to Jesus and not just say thank you, but to throw himself on his face in the dirt to praise him. So what made him different? And I think to myself, you know what? He had in his heart genuine gratitude. And that's different than being simply thankful. Saying thanks is very easy. But to have gratitude in one's heart makes all the difference. And I think that's what was different with that one leper, the Samaritan foreigner. He had gratitude in his heart. And that moved him to praise, worship, Jesus, who healed him. As we celebrate this Thanksgiving Day, we pray that always we have gratitude in our hearts. Then the thanks that we give to one another, to God, the thanks that we give is genuine because it's in our hearts, not just on our lips. So we give thanks to God today from our hearts for all that we are, all that we have, all that we receive, all that we share with family and friends, with one another, all that we have in God's church, all the opportunities for us to proclaim the gospel by our lives. And not just saying thanks, but with gratitude in our hearts. Friends, trusting in God's loving care for us, we offer our needs this morning. For the church, may the Lord strengthen us in unity 
as we work together in spreading the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of the world, may the Lord bring hope to the hopeless and unity where there is conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with chronic health conditions, may God be their refuge from pain and peace in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may God's blessing be upon us, that we may produce good fruit for the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with a sign of faith, may they come to share in the fullness of eternal life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these prayers, and in thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we come to you with grateful hearts knowing that you love and care for us. And so we ask you to hear these prayers that we make to you, for we make them known in the name of Jesus, who is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Friends, please pray that our sacrifice this morning be acceptable to God, who is almighty. God, our Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings in gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine, and let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin and every blessing. And so now with hearts full of love, we join with your angels today and every day of our lives to sing with them the hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love our human family and who always walk with us on our journey of faith. Blessed indeed is your Son here, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his beloved disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving it to his beloved disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of our faith.
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us, and grant that by the power of your spirit of love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of uh, peace in Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. Rose, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Friends, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom as. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus, your Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us share with one another a sign of place peace. Place peace.
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are praying from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly. Friends, let us pray. In this celebration, O Lord our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your people. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have bread here in the front that is yours to take and enjoy, so we'll bless it before we leave today. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who have showered all creatures with your blessings. Hear the prayers of these, your servants, that whenever we eat this bread, in celebration of this festival of thanksgiving, we may be blessed with your heavenly blessing, that striving always for what is holy, we may continually grow in love. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our sending song is number 603, Now Thank We All Our God, number 603. 